Hey there, English speakers. Welcome to another language breakdown where I like to take a cool video from the internet, from YouTube, and we watch it together and I break down the language so you can understand it better and so you can actually use these fluency tricks and fluency builders <laughs> to improve your English fluency at home or from wherever you are. So if you like this, if you think it's a good idea, then hit that like and subscribe button. Smash the hell out of it! That was weird. But uh, let's go on. Today, we have an awesome interview by a guy named Michael Francis. If you are familiar, if you've seen the last uh, video about Michael Francis, I'll put that up there. And he plays a little game called, uh, what was it called? Like, yes or no, or true or false or something, right? Never have I ever. But here he has a video interview. It's an interview with a channel called Valuetainment. I will put that below so you can watch the original. This is a piece, and I thought it'd be interesting to see how it's possible that he exited the mafia he was a mafia boss like the boss and he exited and lived to tell about it that never happens how did he do that that's what we're going to find out today how he did that i will play the video then stop it and explain some of the language then play a little more so you'll hopefully understand better and improve your english fluency cool let me get over here and let's watch this interview. Also, one other thing. Let me know in the comments below or contact me on Facebook and let me know if this is very interesting to you and if you'd like an entire class on it. If you'd like to join me and I can help you through the entire interview, then let me know and I'll create that for you and we'll work through it together. So let me know if that would interest you either in the comments below or contact me on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. So anyway, let's get into this interview as he's talking about how he got into the mafia, the swearing in, and then how he got out and survived. Kind of on the job training. And uh, two weeks later, I sat with the boss and, uh, you know, he ran things down for me and uh, told me what to expect. And for the next year and a half, I was kind of a recruit where I kind of learned the life, how to do anything. I so first, he said he ran things down for me. He ran things down. That policy, even with me, is on some. My dad's a good soldier. He just said, go home. Somebody will be in touch with you. Do whatever you're told. It was kind of on-the-job training. And uh, two weeks later, I sat with the boss and, uh, you know, he ran things down for me. If he ran things down for him, he ran things down. He just means taught him how to do it, right? <laughs> Gave him a tutorial, taught him what this life is about, right? It's about this, 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 to run things down. Give essential information. And uh, two weeks later, I sat with the boss and, uh, you know, he ran things down for me and uh, told me what to expect. And for the next year and a half, I was kind of a recruit where I kind of learned the life, how to do anything I was told to do to prove myself worthy. And then uh, Halloween night, 1975 is when uh, I was formally inducted into that life. You he had to prove himself worthy, to prove himself worthy where I kind of learned the life, how to do anything I was told to do to prove myself worthy. To prove yourself worthy, it's to show that we can trust you, right? To prove yourself worthy, to prove that you're valuable to me, right? You have to prove yourself worthy maybe in a new job. If you're in a trial period, you have to prove yourself worthy maybe... <laughs> to a father to date his daughter, you know, prove yourself worthy, prove that you are trustworthy, prove that I can trust you, prove yourself worthy. And then uh, Halloween night, 1975 is when uh, I was formally inducted into that life. You remember it vividly? Vividly, yeah. 
and how was what was that process like? Was there a ritual? Was there an experience you had to go through? Very, very solemn ceremony, very serious. Uh, six of us walked into a room individually towards midnight that night. It was a very secure setting, obviously. I walked into a room, the boss. Notice that interesting use of towards midnight. It was towards midnight. Toward, maybe you have learned toward like in a direction, but toward midnight, meaning close to midnight, right? The very interesting use of language. Notice where you can take details like this, if you like it, and add it into your language, right? Toward midnight. It was toward midnight. It was about midnight towards midnight that night. It was a very secure setting, obviously. I walked into a room, the boss was seated at the head of like a horseshoe configuration, the underboss and the consigliere to his left and right, and all of our couple regimes are captains or alongside of them. And uh, I walked down the aisle, stood in front of the boss, I held out my hand, he took a knife right here, cut my finger, some blood dropped on the floor, this is a blood oath. I cupped my hands, he took a picture of a saint, Catholic altar card, put it in my hands and lit it aflame. It didn't hurt, it, it burned quickly, it was just symbolic. And he said, tonight, Michael Francis, you are born again into a new life, into La Cosa Nostra, this thing of ours. Violate what you know about this life, betray your brothers, and you will die and burn in hell like the saint is burning in your hands. Did you catch that? <laughs> Violate this trust, and you will die and burn in hell like the saint is burning in your hands. No real language to teach there, but powerful. I wonder, <laughs> I thought I should stop it. Betray your brothers and you will die and burn in hell like the saint is burning in your hands. Do you accept? Yes, I do. And that's it. That's the ritual. That's uh, wow. short. There's some language. That's it. And that's it. Right? And that's it. That's the ritual. That's it. And that's it, right? When it's like, when you say, there it is, right? And that's it. Yes, I do. And that's it. That's the ritual. That's uh, it's wow. short and sweet, but extremely serious. Now, there was six of you. The, the... Six of us. We went in individually. You take it alone. Got it. And then out of these six, apparently you're the only one that's alive. They're all dead. They're all dead. Not one of them died in natural causes. Every one of them were murdered. Wow. So why are you still here? You know, because if you if you read the story and you 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 put yourself out there, and it's not like you went and you ratted people out or you became an informant. There's nothing there. That he said they ratted people out. It's not like you went and you let's read the story and you 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 put yourself out there, and it's not like you went and you ratted people out. There are a couple language points to to see there. It's not like it's not like you ratted people out. Let's start with ratted people out. When you rat somebody out, that's a very harsh way to say you told on somebody or you told the authority that somebody was doing something wrong, right? You gave you saw somebody doing something and you told a teacher or you told a parent or you told a police you ratted somebody out. You told an authority that they're doing something, right? You ratted them out. Another word, tattle. You tattled. That's a children's word for it. But the fluency builder part, the fluency builder is, it's not like, it's not like, it's not like you did this. It's not like you killed anybody. It's not, why is he so angry? It's not like you killed anybody. Right? You just cheated on an exam, <laughs> you know? Um, so it's not like this. It's not like, that's a very useful fluency builder, right? It's not like you ratted somebody out, right? So they put those together, right? Let's listen to those again, and then we'll continue. You, you, you put yourself out there, and it's not like you went and you ratted people out or you became an informant there's nothing there that people will say even some of the guys that were upset that you stepped away they don't call you informant they just say you know it's impressive to see that he was able to make it and we're proud of him even some of your enemies are saying good things about you what how did you, how was that process for you never hear somebody survive when they leave the family how did that happen with you 
Well, you know, Patrick, I don't, I, I didn't have any grand plan because there's no. We're going to stop here and then you can, I'll let you listen. Uh, but well, you know, you see those fluency builders. These are the ones that I highlight all the time to help you sound more fluent, right? Well, you know, Patrick, well, you know, Patrick, well, you know, well, you know, he could say, uh, you know, I left or whatever his next sentence was, but that, well, you know, Patrick, that's kind of a way to transition, right? It sounds a lot smoother. It sounds a lot more fluent. Well, you know, students, <laughs> right? Well, you know, Jesse, uh, I just need to improve my fluency because blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, you know. I'm with you. Well, you know, Patrick, I, don't want, I, I didn't have any grand plan because there's no blueprint to walk away from that life, not enter a program and survive. And, you know, I'm only saying this because it's a fact. I don't know of anybody else that has done that successfully, especially at the level that I reached, because I was at a pretty high level. You know, I didn't know how it was going to work out. I knew that when I walked away, um, people were going to be very upset. You don't walk away from that life. You're not allowed to renounce it. And I had a lot of trouble as a result. But, you know... Uh... He said, I had a lot of trouble as a result. I had a lot of trouble as a result. I had a lot of trouble means I had a lot of problems, right? You know, there were a lot of complications. Uh, I had a lot of trouble as a result. I had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble. If you want to practice the pronunciation, uh, the shadowing, as I tell you, right? I had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble. Go back and listen to that again. Listen to him say it if you want to copy the way he says it. I had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble. About to renounce it. And I had a lot of trouble as a result. But you know, uh, for me, there's two sides of this. There's a spiritual side, obviously. I'm a person of faith. And the bottom line for me is I believe God had a different plan and a purpose for my life. And over the past. The bottom line is a very powerful fluency builder and a very powerful transition. The bottom line is that means the main point. The main point is, the bottom line is, the bottom line is, I had to get out of that life. The bottom line is, you want to learn how to communicate more smoothly. The bottom line is, you want to pass the exam. I don't care about anything else, right? The bottom line is, I want to make more money. The bottom line is, and then you fill in the blank, the main idea, the bottom line. And the bottom line for me is I believe God had a different plan and a purpose for my life. And over the past 20 years, um, I've seen more evidence of that, and, and I'm very secure with that. It's God's plan. But aside from that, you know, I realize that God never throws you into the fire without preparing you first. So I spent 20 years in that life at a very high level, and I was a good student of the life. I, I observed and I watched, and I, I reached a certain level there. So I knew I had to make changes. You know, one of the horrors about that life, and I don't know if you know this, but you might be in trouble, in serious trouble. Your best friend walks you into a room, you don't walk out again. And unfortunately, I've experienced that in my life with other people. And so I said, okay, um, they're not gonna walk me into a room. They're gonna have to work to get me. I move out. They're not gonna walk me into a room. The worst case scenario, he says, is your best friend walks you into a room, if you walk, someone walks you into a room, they really take you into a room. They walk with you into a room, but they guide you. Another place we say you walk somebody or walk something is you walk your dog, right? I walked my dog today. I went for a walk with my dog. He wouldn't say that, right? I walked my dog or I took my dog for a walk, right? But I walked my dog. They walk you into a room. They weren't going to walk me into a room know this but you might be in trouble in serious trouble your best friend walks you into a room you don't walk out again and unfortunately I've experienced that in my life with other people and so I said okay um, they're not gonna walk me into a room they're gonna have to work to get me I move out of New York I would have never made it in New York uh, I move way out across the country to California it's one thing to try to walk somebody into the room it's another thing to send a hit squad 
uh, to try to get somebody who knows what's going on. A hit squad. They send a hit squad, a hit man. And I've mentioned this before. A hit man is a person you pay to kill somebody. Right. So a hit squad, I'd imagine <laughs> I'm not in that life. Uh, but a hit squad, I imagine, are a group of people that you pay to kill somebody. <laughs> You're right. Essentially, some pretty powerful stuff. Uh, I move way out across the country to California. It's one thing to try to walk somebody into the room. It's another thing to send a hit squad uh, to try to get somebody who knows what's going on. It's one thing to do this. It's another thing to do that. Very good uh, like uh, comparison when you're storytelling as Michael Francis is a great storyteller, as you can see if you follow his interviews. Very good to follow his story structure. His pronunciation might be a little difficult, but it's one thing to go after somebody in New York. It's another thing to go across the country to California, right? It's one thing to do this, talking about another level. It's another thing, another level, more difficult, a different thing to do this. So it's one thing to do A, it's another to do B, right? Very good to compare two different situations. I uh, move way out across the country to California. It's one thing to try to walk somebody into the room. It's another thing to send a hit squad uh, to try to get somebody who knows what's going on. And uh, I never put a house in my name, no utilities. I, uh, I never went to any nightclubs, bad place for me. I know who hangs out there. Somebody sees me, they make a call to New York. They want to be a hero. I walk in the parking lot, boom, I'm gone. Mm. I stopped creating patterns in my life. I never went to the same restaurant every Tuesday night. I never walked my dog every morning at seven o'clock. So if somebody was scoping me, they had, a, they had a tough time in figuring out where I was. And I was very disciplined. One of the things, one of the homeworks I'm gonna ask you to do, by the way, is to maybe write below what his steps were. How did he avoid getting seen, getting spotted, right? He just went over some, some very detailed information, but the detailed information was to tell the general story. I want to listen again and listen for that. I want you to write below what were his steps. How did he avoid this? We're going to listen again. Parking lot, boom, I'm gone. Somebody wants to be a hero. Somebody sees me, they make a call to New York, they want to be a hero. I walk in the parking lot, boom, I'm gone. Mm. I stopped creating patterns in my life. I never went to the same restaurant every Tuesday night. I never walked my dog every morning at seven o'clock. So if somebody was scoping me, they had, a, they had a tough time in figuring out where I was. And I was very disciplined in that, very disciplined, because I never sell my former associates short. There was very capable guys there. And then what happened, um, I just outlasted everybody. I mean, who went to jail? Who got killed? We had a big war in our family. And outlasted. I outlasted everybody. We've talked about the prefix out before. Um, it means like do something more than, right? Uh, to outwork, to work more than, to outshine, to shine or to stand out more than somebody, to outperform, to perform better than somebody. I outlasted them, meaning he still survived. He outlasted in life, right? He lasted longer than a lot of his former associates, as he calls them, right? Uh, outlasted. I outlasted them. I just outlasted everybody. I mean, who went to jail? Who got killed? We had a big war in our family in the early 90s. About 13 guys got killed. Another 20 or something went to jail for life. And I just outlasted everybody. And you know, the, the major thing for me was that I, I never testified against anybody. I didn't send anybody to prison. I didn't put anybody in trouble. Had I done that, it would have been a lot worse. It would have been a lot worse because some people had personal feelings against me. Because when I left, you know, look, I was making a lot of money. A lot of people were earning with me. And when you shut that off, people get upset. And they resented that, you know, especially my boss at the time. But the fact that I didn't hurt anybody over a period of time, that really went in my favor. And um, listen, 
you know, there's no guarantees. Um, you know, I'm still careful when I go to certain places. Still till today? Oh, yeah. Really? So the level of paranoia is not gone? It's not paranoia. And, I, you know, it's not a macho thing. I don't want you to think that. But I just feel very secure. But, you know, look, God doesn't tell you to be stupid. I can't. We'll stop there. So there's some good information there. And like I said, for your homework, for your assignment to test your listening, I'd like you to write below, how did he escape, right? Test your listening more than just the assignments. I want you to test your listening. This is something I do for my private students, but I want to do it with you too. Uh, test your listening right below. Let's see how much you understood. What did he do? How did he survive leaving the mafia? He laid out specific steps that he took to be careful, specific measures he took. So write that below in the comments. And uh, also, let me know if you'd like an entire series of lessons on this. A course just dedicated to this interview so you can understand to help you improve your fluency. And we'll go a little deeper with that and provide assignments. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And uh, I'd love to connect with you. Maybe we can do it together. And uh, you can be a part of it. And I'll train you specifically. We'll work out the details. Anyway, um, that's it for me. That's it for me. Like the video, share the video, uh, and subscribe and follow me. That's it. I'm also putting together notes with these language breakdowns. I'll put that in the description box below as well. You can find the link to the notes to all of these language breakdowns so you can study for yourself. Other than that, that's it for me. Keep teaching, keep learning. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time. Thank you.